Hi, it's Wayne O'Keefe. I'm uh, fishing in uh, late spring, and while it's around right about this time, we can get some pretty hot days. Today's pretty cold. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of rubbish and uh, branches and debris in this water. So unfortunately, that makes fishing a little bit different or difficult at times because um, you know, you're catching and hooking up on plastic bags and bits of string and little branches and things. Um, this this river is usually pretty productive, so I'm gonna. Hit it today and see how I go. We'll see what People happens. ask me what type of rig that I use in fishing these types of waters, and look, most of the time I use the same type of rig. It's basically a, a running sinker, although in this case it's a running burly cage. So, as you know, I, I'm a big believer in burly, I use it all the time. These burly cages have a, some fins on them, so they actually, rather than drag along the bottom, when you actually pull in, when you're actually reeling in, they come straight up out of the water. Uh, and avoid getting caught in the snags and things. They have some weight on them, they have some lead on them, so they act as a sinker, but they carry burley in here. So the burley then is very, very close to your hook. In fact, that's only, uh, say, 45 to 50 centimetres from the size 8 hook that I've got on here. And it's a running line, so I've got a line stop there. And so what happens is the fish can actually pull on that, not feel much resistance, feel confident and take up that bait, in other words, swallow. So that line stop there is just a barrel with a spike in it. You pull the spike out and you can move that up and down. So I can vary the distance between my weight and my hook. And that's what I use every time. If you're interested in these burly cages, I sell them on my website, howtofish.com.au. Well, I've been here for probably about half an hour. I got a couple of tiny bites, but absolutely nothing really happening. And um, so what I did is I, I had large hooks and big baits. I had a size 8 and a size 2 hook with uh, one with a piece of pilchard, one with um, a, a bit of pippy on it, and I wasn't catching anything. So what I did is I went down to my survival gear and I, I've got the first fish in. Now, this is not a big this is not a big mullet by any means, but I've got a feeling there might not be much else here so today. Those conditions you have to work with are just uh, smaller hooks, smaller baits, lighter line. I, I tied on a, a lighter trace on the end so that the uh, bait was more natural and that's what that got that fish in. Obviously the, uh, the, the heavier line wasn't doing it, wasn't making bait presentation look right. But I have left one rod in there with the heavier line and uh, a bigger hook on it. Hopefully something big might come around. But under the conditions with so much rain for so many days, sometimes that can shut things down a bit. So we'll see how we go. The other thing that's a bit of a challenge is the amount of stuff floating in the water. Like I've, I've had, you know, I've got caught up in, um, in in a plastic bag as I thought might happen, and um, some uh, some other leaf litter on that, wrapping around my my line and then pushing it down away from my target site. So you just have to keep adjusting all the time. Okay, I'm into one now, and uh, on the larger line. Okay, so all right. They're starting to move up in size, which is good. Now this was on the heavier line, which is good. I had to move it a couple of times because um, it was getting caught up with so much of the stuff floating down there, you know, all the debris. But um, look, at least the, the fish were about. And the burley, certainly accurate casting, and that burley will do it every time. Get this guy back. Now, that's what the burley cage will look like when it's got burley in it. The burley is my own special mix that I use, and what happens is when you mix it with water, so it comes as a dry powder, you mix it with water and it goes into a sort of, like a, not a dough, but a cake mix. You don't want it like dough. If it's dough, it'll stay in there. But it's sort of like a cake mix, I guess. And what happens is that'll stay in there. When I cast in, as that's sinking through the, the water column, it'll send off some of the outer burley into the stream, the water stream. That'll flow downstream and attract fish up. And then uh, probably about half of this will stay in the burley cage, so that when it lands on the bottom, you've got burley right next to your hook and bait. So that's the way it works. It's your sinker, but it's got a big advertisement that there's food around. It's got a lot of uh, food signatures in it that really attract fish strongly. So this combination gets all the fish in the area knowing there's something in it. Uh, and I've just got another one, and I've it's got into the uh, into the rocks down here. I've just got to see if I can get it out.
Oh, okay, yeah, another one. Like, like peas in a pot. Um, they're, uh, I've, I've got these in the area and they're taking my bait because it's really hard to hit them though. I mean, I'm probably missing about six or seven for every one that I might get, but at least um, the fish are in the area and having a bit of fun catching them. And the burley is definitely working. Without the burley on the other rod where I haven't been using the burley, I haven't actually got them in the area. So, uh, obviously today, burley is, uh, is the way to go. So, so one back. thing that I've found is that I'm, I can actually just hold my, my rod loosely like this and I can feel everything that's happening. I'm getting bites on this rod right now. I can feel everything through. So that's the great thing about graphite rods is you feel everything through to your finger. And I'm getting, I'm getting plenty of little hits on it and little pulls, but not enough for me to want to strike into. I've got to wait until I see that the rod tip bend enough when I feel enough force on it so I'll know that it's in the uh, fish's mouth. But uh, it's great fun doing this because you feel everything that's happening. And um, I specifically um, imported these um, bass red fishing rods because they've got uh, such a high tens uh, tensile um, graphite in them that they're very, very stiff. You feel everything. So they're great to fish with. And every now and again, <laughs> you'll get one and you'll miss it. Anyway, next time. So every now and again, you get <laughs> you'll hook into one, you'll manage to, to hook into one of those and um, unfortunately it will be a small fish like this mullet. Okay. So, okay, so I've attracted these today, there's a lot of them, but uh, um, at least I'm, I'm getting some fish, so that's a positive thing. Um, sometimes when you're fishing, there's a lot of small fish about. And unfortunately, I mean, both rods have been getting little hits on them all the time. Um, there's little mullets and things like that out there. So the fish are about, but if you're some, after something bigger, you're gonna have to sort of, you're gonna have to hold this rod. Um, it's getting fairly good hits on it. Um, but you're gonna have to wait around for those smaller fish to, uh, to actually attract the big ones. If you get enough small fish activity, yes, you lose your bait a lot and, um, you might not be catching the size fish you want, but uh, that small fish activity will often bring in a big one. And uh, sometimes you'll notice that things go quiet for a little while and suddenly you get a big hit. Um, just got to be prepared for that. So, you know, that, that means that the small fish have actually moved out as the big ones come in. They'll have one shot and uh, you've got to be prepared to actually um, to hook into them. Uh, otherwise, you might just get small fish and like today, there's really only small fish about. They're, they're hitting all the time, which is good. I've got them in the area, but I'm going to have to be content with small fish. And because they're um, because they're mullet, they are um, a bit harder to hook. They're notorious for you know for dropping the bait all the time. So I'll just keep going and, and just try to keep um, to get those fish in. I do want to catch fish. I enjoy doing that. Sometimes you just have to uh, be content with the small stuff. Anyway, hopefully. The bigger roll with the big hook might get something big in on the day. We'll see how we go with that. <laughs> well, oh, well, I got this one on a bigger hook this time. It's, I mean, for this fish, it's a size 8. And I, this is the only fish, oh, sorry, this is the second fish I've caught on these, the bigger hooks. Um, so they are taking them. Oops. They are taking them, so um, obviously um, that will work sometimes, but this is, you know, all the, most of the bites are coming on the other the rod, so I'll keep going with the smaller hooks. I think that's the way, and uh, hopefully have a bigger bait out there for something bigger than just these small mullets. So I'll give you a bit of action now. This both rods are going. Um, you can see this rod. There's small tips on it happening all the time, but of course these are only small fish. And okay, so if I put, if I got this guy, no, I missed him. Oh no, I've got him, but it's tiny. So there's tiny fish here. Like this. And uh, that's all I'm going to get today, I think. But at least I'm having fun. I've got quite a few now, so the fish are biting. And it's all a matter of sort of working out how they'll bite. So most of them are happening on the rod with my, what I call my survival gear. Uh, it is basically, it's a smaller hook lighter trace okay and the um the trace most definitely makes a difference in in making presenting it the uh, this naturally 
and even with a small hook you can catch bigger fish. So if something bigger comes, like uh, I've caught um, the, some trout valley in here um, and a bigger brim in here in the past uh, on the smaller hook. So all of that worked. In back. Um, so I can catch bigger fish. The only thing is with the smaller trace you can't lift the fish out of the water if you've got a bigger one uh, and also it's best to have a net. But uh, that does work and uh, I sell all of that gear on my website. So if you're interested, have a look at fish.com.au. It's all there. Okay, into another one. And this, this one feels a little bit bigger, so that's good. I can hold on to it. Yeah, it's a big eye. Oh, it's a big one. Ugh, a little brim and you can tell there's a bit of rubbish around so uh, there's a few brim around as you can see they they're tiny but uh, just makes a bit of bit of difference bit of variety well Good. I nearly lost a rod it's amazing I thought if I if I had a, a big hook big bait in there you know eventually I might get something I'd been uh, I'd been getting a small bites and then suddenly this rod went right over thankfully it caught in the uh, the rod holder so the, the reel caught in the rod holder, otherwise it would have gone out there. But I had, it was just that one big surge, then the fish obviously got off. Very disappointing. I was fiddling with my other rod at the time, so not focused, and uh, that's the trouble. So fishing with two rods at times means that sometimes you'll, have, you'll miss a fish. Might have been the only big fish for the day because I've got to go soon. A couple of hours of, um, of fishing here has been pretty productive. Um, I didn't get anything for the first half hour, but I think it's because it took that while for the, the burly to build up. Uh, and once it did, um, especially on the smaller rod where I've been using, I've been casting more frequently, I've got the smaller the hook and that, I've been getting plenty of fish. Uh, very disappointing, I, I missed that big one, it would have been nice to know what it was, but uh, it does show you that they, even in conditions like this, um, that, I've got to watch this rod again, uh, even in even, uh, conditions like this, which might not be optimum for, uh, for fishing, um, if you use the right techniques, you can get the stuff in. If you're interested in any of the fishing that I do, any of the, the, the gear that I've got, you can always check that on my website, howtofish.com.au. And if you're interested in the lesson and learning how to do this, um, I also provide those. So, until next time, we'll see you. And if you've enjoyed this, give us a, a thumbs up and subscribe.